Hello, it's Spence, the evil genius, with your lab secrets tip of the day. Hey guys, I'm super energized for 2013, so I'm going to introduce this new literally tip of the day video. So those folks who want to send any questions at all about WordPress, BuddyPress, BBPress, CSS styling, theme modifications for responsive or our other class of press stuff, just send them to help at labsecrets.com and we'll more likely than not be able to do a quick video like this one to show you how to do it. And for everybody else, I'm going to be able to share with you lots of cool things that happen behind the scenes here and the tools and the ways that I actually interact so that you can kind of pick up the same tips and tricks and techniques. Let's get started. So Gary Jessen sent me a very nice email who's a purchaser of our class press child theme and he wanted to know how to change the following text color for the headings, the menu bar, and then the color scheme of the website from red to green logo color. And he's got this very nice looking uh, start here with a great logo over at betheclub.co.za. Let's get started with what we're going to need first, which is our favorite tool called Firebug. Firebug is available at getfirebug.com. Works with uh, Firefox as an extension, but you can also run it independently for other browsers too. So I believe for Chrome and Safari, etc. Not sure about Internet Explorer. There's a different set of tools for that. So let's focus on those. Firebug is going to let us see what's under the hood of all these elements and attributes. So let's jump in. First question, I want to change the text color for all the headings. And by headings, I'm presuming Gary means these nice tags, which I think are H2. Because in a good website design, which is what ClassPress has, H1 should only be used by one thing, and that's the main headline of the page. Everything should be below that in the taxonomy, H2, H3, H4, because that's a good practice for Google. If you're ever getting into the code, don't ever use the H1 tag more than once on a page. When I right-click on any of these potential uh, tags, I'm going to use the inspect element with Firebug choice. And now our little window pops up that shows me the power tools I need. And this is kind of like an x-ray machine. As I roll my mouse over, you can see everything lighting up that I'm rolling over. Isn't that cool? I mean, this is really powerful stuff. And basically, it highlights the one that I started with in blue. And you can see here it's the H2 tag. So, yes, I was right. It's an H2 tag. And just to confirm it, I'm going to do over here, inspect. And likewise, it's an H2 tag. So that's good news. It means that we can change everything with one uh, element and its corresponding attribute. I want to show you, though, in the theme itself, probably at a higher level, the color scheme is affected. Because what I notice here with this title tag is that it only has one element and attribute, uh, one attribute, which is the text shadow. So let me clarify by that. I keep throwing these words around. The element we're talking about is this tag, the h2 uh, dot dotted. So it's the h2 tag with the class of dotted. The attribute is kind of like saying an adjective. What thing we're changing about that particular element. And the only thing here for an attribute is just text shadow. And here's the settings for the text shadow. That means that there's not a color specifically given to that, and that means it's got to be higher up. It just so happens that in Classopress, that's contained within the container class. You'll notice here that the container class, which covers basically this whole page, has a color. And the color is this dark gray, this hexadecimal color of 4F, 4F, 4F. So we have two choices here. Since he wanted to change the text color for all headings, we could change that main color, but if we did that, the downside is it's going to change all of the color for everything in the container. Watch. If I change it to red, it not only changed the color of the heading tag, but it changed a lot of other stuff too, most of these links. And that's probably not what he's looking for. <clears throat> so let's be more specific. We need to go back down to the inspector, and we'll see the H2 class. And let's do something, too. Let's reset this. Now, remember, with Firebug, uh, the great thing about the tool is when we make a change here, this isn't actually changing the site permanently. It's just giving us a preview that we're going to have to then save to the actual style sheet of the theme. Okay? So we can just instead reload this page, reset this. And again, we're going to find the new element again by right-clicking on it with the Firebug choice. So what we can do is add color just to 
this particular element of H2 class data. And what we do is, let me do that real slowly. <clears throat> and I have a little bit of a frog today, sorry about that. <clears throat> when we highlight this by clicking with our left mouse, we can then hit the Enter key to move to the details of that attribute. And then if we hit the Enter key again, it allows us to create or type in our own new attribute. In which case, we're going to type the word color, which is used to affect the font color. Then when you hit the tab button, it moves it over so we can put in the details. And here you can either use a solid color, which is kind of old school, you know, red, blue, green, orange, yellow, etc. Most of us use a hexadecimal code. And there's lots of ways to do this. You can get online for free what's called a color picker for Mac or PC. I'm trying to put this where you can see it. And that gives you this nice little tool, which has a color wheel or a crayon box. And then it has this other thing here that lets you see the hexadecimal color. So if I wanted red and I checked out the hex color, that's one color of red. I can tweak it on the wheel, make it a little darker red, and that's the hex color there. So let's say we use this color now, but we're only going to apply it to the headings. So I want to copy that hex color, and then I can just cancel that tool out. I'm going to go back over here to Firebug, and I'm going to just do as I said. I'm going to click on the attribute, hit enter one more time. I'm going to type color, hit enter one more time, or tab, it doesn't matter. I'm going to paste that hex color in. Okay? I'm going to hit enter, watch what happens. This is going to be exciting. Well, actually, it did it automatically, sorry. I got excited too late. But do you notice what happened? It changed those um, headings. And now, I don't know what color Gary is going to want, but that's easy. You know, we can use the old school method. We could do green. We could do gold. You can even use your up and down keys and go through a bunch of different options. For example, if I just use my arrow key, I can go through all the available possibilities. I don't really recommend using solid colors, though, because um, they're just not the contemporary way to do it, not as exact. I'd say go ahead and, again, use a hex color. Okay, so let's go ahead and now see how we can make this permanent. What we're going to do is go down to this element H2 uh, dotted. We're going to copy this declaration. Now, normally what you'll do is on your own site, either using FTP or within your dashboard, you're going to save that into the labzip-custom.css file, which is a style sheet that overrides all the other style sheets. Now, since Gary didn't give me a login to his site, and that's okay, I'm going to show you on our LabZip demo site. This is the dashboard that you'd see if you're using Classopress and our child theme. And here I'm going to go to Appearance Editor, which is where I can access the themes files. And in this case, be sure on the right side, we're going to select the proper theme, which is in our case, Classopress LabZip. It's the child theme for Classopress. If you're watching this video and you're using something else, that's okay. Just make sure you select the active theme that you're trying to modify. With the Classopress LabZip, if you scroll down under Styles, we have a very special style sheet we created called LabZip-Custom, which is the one that overrides all the other ones. And what we're going to do is select that. And what will happen is it'll open in this window. Now we're going to paste that code in. And I'll tell you, we don't need to add this extra text shadow because that's already in place, so we can get rid of that. And all we have is just basically the h2 dotted element and the attribute of color is equal to this reddish hexadecimal. We click on update file. Now if you're using caching program like we use quick cache, be sure to clear the cache so that the code is the current code. Otherwise you have a snapshot of what happened before you made this change. Okay, and then we're going to open up the site and we will see hopefully. And there you go. The change is now that the headings are red. So really, really simple. And that's the way you do any of these other style uh, changes. So let's try the next one. Menu bar where the home categories blogs are to 950 pixels across. So I'm not 100% sure what the problem is here, but let me explain how this works and then you can make a judgment call for yourself. They have included a special button up here for posting an ad. 
And although that, I believe, can be changed in the settings of Classipress, we can override it anyway and hide it so that this entire menu bar goes all the way across. And when Gary's asking about 940 pixels, he's meaning that if I scroll down to, let's go to header. Look, there we go. If you'll notice here, we've got two things happening. There's a header menu and there's a search bar below. But in any event, the, the width of the container inside, let's say for the search bar, has a width of 940 pixels. So Gary's referring to the fact that this content from the edge of this to the edge of this is 940. And I think he's asking he wants the navigation to do the same. So let's right click on the navigation to get us in the range of where we need to be. And I can see here we've got a class called header menu. And inside of that is an internal container. And that container has a couple things. And what we see here is that it's got an unordered list, which has all the navigation stuff. And then it also has an additional button before it. And so what I think is happening is that this button is taking up space and Gary wants this to go full width. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide this button. Now what we need to do is select it like we've just done through uh, the HTML area or right click on it with the firebug. And now we can see here that button orange OBTN is what we're talking about. And I think the OBTN is the way to go because button orange would apply to other stuff like these buttons and we don't want to affect that. But this OBTN is probably specific to this area here because it says header menu OBTN. What we're going to use is a new attribute called display. And then when we hit enter, we're going to type none. And when we do that, it hides that button. Now remember, if you hide that button, then nobody's going to be able to use that button. So I'm not telling you to do this. I'm telling you how to do it if you want to, because that way, if you needed to post an ad, you have to have this button somewhere else. Now there's a way to specifically limit that to the home page, which I can show you. But let's start with the basics. So if I wanted to hide that button, that's how I'd do it. And again, I would copy the rule definition, go back to my editor, put it in. And in this case, again, I'm going to just remove any of the things I'm not trying to change. I need to update it and clear the cache. And when I do, this button should disappear from here also, as it does. Okay. Next. If you've done that, I think the problem solves itself, but just in case, you'll notice, see, this outside container is now going full width, header menu res. It's going full width. This unordered list will fill out the rest of that now that the button is gone. So we don't even have to force that. We shouldn't force it because once you've declared the width of the outside container, there's no benefit to forcing or declaring the width of the inner container. That's going to cause you problems later if you wanted to modify something else inside of here. Um, only use one attribute for controlling the width of the one container. It's kind of like Tupperware. If you had a Tupperware container that was large and let's say 12 inches wide and you put another one inside, you don't need to declare that the one inside is less than 12 inches because it's implied it wouldn't fit inside the container if it was larger than 12 inches. You see? All right, so that solves that one. Lastly, the color scheme of the web website from the red to the green color logo. Well, that's a harder one to say because as anyone who's used Classpress knows, there is um, default color scheme set up. If you go into the dashboard and I believe the under settings and, you know, red theme, green theme, blue theme. However, I can't show you how to individually change stuff and that would probably be easier way. So if you wanted to individually change stuff, let's go back to Gary's site. I would say that you should select certain elements and change those directly in the same way we've just done. For example, let's say this red line, inspect it with a, a firebug. We can see here it's the header menu, border top, and that's the color. Well, let's just pick a nice green color instead. I take my color picker, I use the magnifying glass, and let's pick out one of the colors from his logo. It's a nice color. If I want to save that for later, I can even drag it down here so I can reuse it. I'm going to copy that, go over here and see how it looks. I'm going to highlight just the color code and paste that. 
That looks pretty nice. Okay, so that's a keeper. I'm going to right click, copy the rule, go back over to where I was working, appearance editor. Under the lab zip custom style sheet. No. New line, put that in, update it. Clear my cache and my theme is set up a little different I have this whole area so I'm not sure if that's gonna even display on this one he's Gary's done some oh you can kind of see it see the top there it's green because in my theme I've got the standard setup where Gary's already removed the color of the background but the whole thing would apply the same way let's say if I want to make the whole thing green so in my case I've got this area here which is the border top and now the background so let's do the same for the background Oops, put too much in. So let me just get the color out there. There it is. Handy to sometimes use a clipboard. There we go. So that would be one way to do it too. If I wanted to copy that, save it, put that in. And again, I, I don't necessarily need to do the two now that I've got them together, but I want to make sure I don't do something that overrides it. So if I was going to do it this way with two different entries, I would have the border top and the background. But really, that's bad protocol, so I would probably just delete the two entries and combine them into one. Remember, just each attribute on a separate line. Okay? Hit save or update. And clear the cache. I'm going to reload. I've now got a nice green-looking setup, which is the same for Gary. So this went a little longer than I wanted to, but I was excited to show you a lot of the ways that CSS can really transform your theme, whether it be class press or our responsive. And a lot of these things we've included in the child theme, because remember the beauty of the child theme, in addition to the other features, is that when you make these changes and then you go and update your parent, which you're going to do regularly when they update it, all your saved changes will be preserved. That's the best thing. It's like buying an insurance policy. So you can modify to your heart's content and know that no matter how often you update your theme, as you should often, it's not going to lose your uh, customization. The fact that we've got it set up also that this overrides all the other uh, style sheets, including the parent, is a benefit because you don't have to force some things. So I hope this has been a great little tutorial and tip of the day for you. And I hope, Gary, this works out for you. If any of the rest of you have any questions, you can always reach me at help at labsecrets.com or you can call 312-344-3280 if you need any more specific help. This is Spence, the evil genius. We'll see you next time.